All right, so this is our official Branch Impact Zoom call. We are on our third call of the, uh, of the year, and we're really excited to bring you some of the amazing content that Nicole Nisbet, Anthony Hayes, and Joseph Koss have been working really hard to provide for all of you. Uh, if you've watched any of the videos they've posted in the last couple of days, you know how fired up they are. These individuals are absolutely incredible. And part of the Branch Impact program is to bring the best of the best to all of you so that way you can learn and you can grow and you can just get better as a branch manager, but also as an individual and as a vector representative just in general. So to start off, I just want to talk to you guys about some of the excitement over what's to come. I don't know if you know this, but there are 80... 80 days left until you have the opportunity to open up your office. Now, I know that not all of you will be opening up on May 1st, but for the majority of you, I really want to challenge you to make sure that you can get your office opened as quickly as possible. You know, do you have a plan in place to open up during the first week of May, whether it's May 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th? You know, it's really important that you get that, that ball rolling Start recruiting and start filling up your first training class. You have that big first pop there. Now, for me personally, when I started out as a branch manager, I wasn't able to open up until May 15th. It just wasn't in the cards for me. I was moving three hours away from where I went to school and I wasn't able to leave until May 15th. Well, what I did in the time between May 1st and May 15th was I got some of my sorority sisters together and we all would call applicants and we would schedule them for those first couple interviews. So that way on May 15th, I moved up to my office, I set up my office, and on May 16th, I had three different interview time slots with about 10 people scheduled in each one of those slots. So if you can't open up right in the beginning of May, there are absolutely ways that you can still get a head start and you can still compete with other people who are opening up maybe in May for, on May 1st or in the first week of May especially Facebook Jumpstart right now, guys. This is an amazing opportunity for all of you to get that head start, to start making those connections, to start building that network in your territory. So as we've all been talking about, if you're not actively part of Facebook Jumpstart, you are behind the ball. Something that I've recently done, you might have noticed, but in our Facebook group, I've actually linked the Facebook Jumpstart group to our group. So if you haven't been able to join that yet, please, after this call, get onto the Branch Impact page and you'll be able to find the Facebook Jumpstart link. Um, hold on one second, see the text, Joseph. He is... I'm on. Oh, okay, you're on. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I figured it out. Okay, cool. All right, so um, lesson three for Facebook Jumpstart launches on February 27th. So if you haven't listened to lesson two, you've got about a month to do that. Definitely listen to that. It's Building Networks 101. It's an awesome, awesome, about 45 minute long lesson. Please listen to that between now and February 27th. Next thing is that there is an amazing opportunity on March 4th to the 10th for you as a branch manager to start getting your, your experience as a manager because chances are your DM won the trip to Munich and their office is going to need to be run by assistant managers and branch managers. This is your opportunity to step up as a young candidate and really prove yourself and start getting that experience as a manager. So it's March 4th to the 10th. If you haven't already talked to your DM about whether or not you have the opportunity to run the office, please do so this week and get a schedule down with you and the other BMCs in your office so that you can split up interviews, get a chance to run some training, get a chance to do some PR calling, all that good stuff. Um, there, I know there are gonna be some contests that are going on with your prospective regions to really get that uh, ball rolling there. Um, next thing, the next two calls are February 21st and March 14th. February 21st is all about branching with friends and holding each other accountable. So one of the cool things about being a branch manager is that you get to grow among your peers. And there are some amazing branch managers who took the opportunity to live with each other this, or this past summer and really hold each other accountable. So we've got those branch managers coming onto our call and talking about what, it, what it's like to have a high-powered accountability group and what were some of the things that they did last month to really push each other and get to that next level. Uh, March 14th is discussing your why and sharing that with your team. 
your why is what's going to drive you throughout the summer, whether it is to pay for your first semester of college, whether it's just to earn enough money so that you can invest and start working towards a life of debt free, or maybe it's to buy a car. You know, there's all these different reasons why you're choosing to be a branch manager. It's to better yourself. But the more clear you can become on your why, the better you can really lead your team. And maybe Tim is still talking on that call. So you're joining us in the middle of March. And then we also have a bonus call that is going to be on March 15th with our national campus relations manager, Mallory O'Neill. And she's going to be talking all about building connections with your local high schools and your college campuses before you launch into your branch summer. So that's going to be awesome. Make sure you put those three dates in your calendar. Again, February 21st, March 14th, and March 15th. We're still working out the time, so keep an eye out in the Facebook group for all that information. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started with our amazing panel. You've already heard a little bit of a glimpse from each one of these people, but we've got Nicole Nisbet, Joseph Koss, and Anthony Hayes Jr. So Nicole, we're going to start off with you. So my first question for you um, is really just about your story. So what I love so much about your story was the intensity and the intentionality of your spring preparation. So can you touch on what you did as it pertains to your personal sales last spring and why it made such a drastic difference in your office this summer? Oh, wait, good, you're good. I can hear you, yep. Okay, cool. Um, so I think the biggest thing that really helped me during the spring was um, doing fairs and shows and just getting into the selling and like, just, like keep selling, you know, um, running into, um, training. That's all awesome. But making sure that you're still very present in the sales aspect. Um, one, because of withholdings. I mean, the more money you have, the better it is. Um, two, because if you're working fairs and shows, like what I started really getting excited about was working fair and shows with CSPs, you know? Um, I remember my first show that I actually just trained at was with Kelly Martins and uh, Marissa Mayer. And being able to work with those girls and their powerhouse girls was just so empowering. And, you know, I think that's part of the reason why my kids, you know, thought so much bigger is because I shared that belief with them, like, hey, like, people are selling, you know, Kelly Martins and uh, Marissa Mayer, they had a $16,000 day at um, the Oklahoma Home and Garden, so for me to see that, I was like, wow, like, people don't only buy Cutco at home, but they buy it when they're going out, and, you know, having my kids get really excited about fairs and shows, you know, getting them to that 20k in career sales um, was super, super exciting, but um, yeah, I mean, building relationships, in the spring with the CSPs really helped. You know, I had Roger Rodriguez. Um, he's a Rolex winner and he's 25 years old. And then I got to go to his wedding. So, you know, th those are super awesome things that I never, I didn't even, we were on the plane actually coming back from the net meeting and um, we were, we were sitting there and he's like, he's like, I can't believe I've only known you a year. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of crazy. You know, like I was literally at your wedding and he's like, I know that's insane. Like, I feel like I've known you forever. And so, you know, building those relationships and getting super excited about these super young, successful people. I mean, even if they aren't in management, you know, they're, they're still kicking butt. So, you know, I had him run one of my, uh, one of my, um, team meetings and we filled the place up with like 20 kids I mean it was ridiculous it was super fun and I got to put it on Facebook and it got super it got a lot of buzz and then um I think another thing too was um Steven Decker like he came in and he did one of my team meetings and um and then Kelly Martins had a breakfast with us where she talked to my reps one-on-one -on -one. so um whatever you can fit in however you can get them involved in your goals you know get super excited share that stuff with them and you know um reach out to them they're 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 not against managers I promise you they think it's just as awesome a lot of them have branched most of them have branched and uh, they're going to support what you're doing. So make sure you get involved and Hey, you might get to go to Mexico out of it with some of your branch money. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that I love that you talked about Nicole was just taking the time to do fairs and shows. I know a lot of you are at college right now. Nikki's at college as well at university of Arkansas, right? Yes. 
pretty busy schedule there, but you were able to find the time in during your weekends to go and either shadow CSPs who are absolutely just rocking it and crushing it at shows, and then to go out and sell yourself and to make that extra money to add into your savings, but also to just have in your pocket is always fun as well. And then in the process of doing these fairs and shows, you were able to make those connections with these top ranked CSPs, FSMs, and tie them into your goals to the point where they wanted to come and help you out. And how cool would it be if as a young branch manager, you're able to bring in somebody to talk to your team who's over a million dollars in sales. Guys, no matter what division you're in, no matter what region you're in, you have CSPs out there that are over a million dollars in sales, that have earned a Rolex at a young age, that have accomplished amazing things. And so if you can take the time now in the spring to make those connections with these people, you're going to have a better shot at really getting them to come into your office and kind of take some of the training off your hands. So Nikki, I loved what you just said. I think it's incredibly valuable. And um, I can see why you had so many kids sell a crap ton of cut cut last summer. I think that's awesome. So Anthony, my next question is for you. So you're the only senior branch on this call tonight, and I know you're going branch a third time, so I'm super excited to see what your summer looks like next, or this upcoming summer. So can you touch on what you did differently moving into summer two versus summer one? Uh, yeah, uh, I think definitely one of the things that I had to work on going from summer one to summer two uh, was really just how to engage my rep and, and how to work with them properly uh, for building up their goals and, and what they wanted to accomplish. And one of the best ways for me to do that was to really see other management styles. I, I think I vibe really well with my DM. I think we're very similar people. Uh, but it was still really, you know, empowering for me to be able to go out and see other managers who are doing well. Like, you know, I have Jay Brad Britton um, as my DVM. I was like a, a vector legend over 256 million or something in career sales. So being able to go see him run a training, see how he interacts with reps and um, see how he would just empower his, his team I was really great for me to be able to see that and kind of add some of that to what I do as a manager. Um, and then being able to visit some of the other DMs in my area as well. Our, luckily, our division's pretty close. So I could see basically every manager in our division run a training. So that was really um, nice in that way there. And then another really great thing is that, you know, which is good, maybe bad sometimes, but uh, my DM in the spring likes to take some vacations. Um, I'll be honest. He likes to go golfing, likes to go to basically everywhere in the world, it almost seems like. Um, and so when he's not here, basically, I, I'm, I run the office. And so that was really great for me for both summers, being able to, go to basically run the office, have to do the interviews, PR calling, training, and really learning the ins and outs of how to make a business successful and being able to kind of fail on someone else's dollar, not having to worry about, you know, paying the rent or, or receptionist, anything like that. Just being able to work, not worrying about that, just worrying more about the rep success is a really big thing. So that, that helped a lot. Yeah, and I know, especially for the Northeast, and I think, I think there's probably the same possibility within the Midwest as well. I'm just not as familiar with the area, but a lot of the offices are within an hour drive of one another. So as a young branch candidate, taking the time to visit different offices and to learn different styles is incredibly valuable because what you've learned from your DM is, is awesome and it's what's gotten you to this point so far, but there are other DMs out there that have incredible management styles, that have incredible philosophies, incredible insights about the business. And so having that opportunity to go and sit down with them and just to learn their thought process is really cool. And you never know, you might find a DM that you've never really had that connection with before. You'll sit down with them, you'll shadow them, and you'll realize that what they're doing is really similar to what you want to accomplish. And you'll make that connection and You'll get to learn these different management styles. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the call, you've got an amazing opportunity March 4th through the 10th, if you're not going to Munich already, to go off and to take over your DM's office. And even if it's not in Munich, not while they're in Munich, your DMs would probably appreciate it if you said, hey, you go off and take a day off, I'm going to take over the office today. And whether or not they decide to leave or they decide to give you the keys, being in that environment during the spring will allow you the chance to really start practicing some of the skill sets that you're gonna be implementing this summer. So thanks so much, I think that was an awesome, awesome tip there. So 
Next question is for Joseph. I'm gonna spotlight you over here. So I know a lot of what you did in the spring to prepare is similar to what Anthony just described, but can you talk a little bit more about the specific things you did while shadowing your DMs and while getting into the office this spring? Yeah, for sure. You know, um, one thing that, you know, this um, is uh, maybe, maybe a little bit unpopular for some managers. Um, I'm a big believer in finding one person that you really want to emulate and really copying that style. You know, for me, my direct manager is Brian Herlman. Um, and we were similar in a lot of ways, but I really love the way he, he managed the office. So any chance I got, I was shadowing him. You know, I was his shadow. I would walk around with a voice memo um, on the phone. And uh, this is a big tip that you guys can implement in the spring. You know, anytime your DM is walking around, like just follow them. You know, if they're having a conversation with a rep, listen to the way they're having that conversation. You know, um, if they are running training, record a section of that training on your voice memo. You don't have to video record it. So what I would do when I was driving around is I would just listen to Brian Holman's conversation with a rep. I recorded his PDI. You know, I recorded his uh, interview. I recorded sections of his training. I recorded him talking to the staff. And I would just listen to that over and over and over and over again and watch it be done live. And as much as I possibly could, I would listen to it. And that really just stuck with me. So anytime I spoke to a rep, you know, I would be able to have a very similar conversation that Brian had with that rep. It's just like in wrestling, you know, the way I got good is I would just watch the best wrestle. I would wrestle with the best and then I'd go out there and a lot of what they did and implemented. So that's one thing that, um, that I did that really helped me that all of you guys can do now. Yeah. And something that I picked up here, what you just said, Joseph is, you know, the, the differences in what Anthony did where he went around and saw multiple different DMs and kind of took a compilation of all and you finding one DM that you wanted to emulate and just doing exactly what he did. So as you guys can see, there's no right or wrong answer to how to really learn and to train. So whatever you feel like works best for you or whatever is available to you during the spring, do it. If you can find a stellar rock star DM that's within your, you know, easy drive area, then go and shadow them. If you can see multiple DMs and that's what you want to do, then take advantage of that as well. So thanks so much, Jessa. So guys, I've got a question for all three of you. You can feel free to jump in um, whenever you want. But the question here is, what are some habits you guys created in the spring that helped you run your office in the summer? Ladies first. Nicole. I would, say, I would say just selling as much as I could, you know, getting used to, I think that helped me with PDI more than anything. I mean, I could tell you, you know, I, I was super quick. Um, so just being in the field and knowing what to give for free, knowing how to give deals, learning how to talk to customers, you know, that's when fair and show really, really helped because I was able to cl close quickly. And so if my, you know, my rep called me at the homemaker, you know, it was a done deal. So it, it wasn't, it was, it was super simple to, you know, build rapport with that customer quickly and get them excited about what they were getting and also say, Hey, like, how's the rep doing? You know, like, you know, um, like, did they mess up at least once? Ha ha ha. You know, so building that rapport quickly and, um, closing quickly, I think that really helped, um, because I was doing shows and um, selling as much as possible. Yeah, and when you do shows, you, you know the CPO off the top of your head. You know what you can give away for free, and you can really help your reps out when they call you and they need some help. That's awesome. Ryan, Anthony, what about you guys? All right, I'll go. Um, I would say the top two that I would give would be, number one, just learning to, like, expand your capacity. Uh, so it's getting really busy. Um, obviously, if you're in school and you're working in the office and you're selling, learn to do all of them at once because when you're in the summer – the busier you are now, the easier it's going to be in the summer to balance everything there. Um, and then just kind of piggybacking off of what Nicole said um, is really learning to sell, kind of planning your goals and then learning to accomplish them. You know, last spring, I basically planned out how to win an All-American and just went out there and said, all right, no matter what, I have to go out and basically win an All-American. Um, and that's kind of what I did. And it kind of really helped going into the summer, knowing that I had planned a goal and accomplished it. And it kind of gives you that addiction to – success more or less <laughs> how to do that 
Yeah, and the sooner you can create those habits, the easier they're gonna come in the summertime, for sure. And right, you can, sorry. Oh, um, I jump in. Okay, I think another thing that I really focused on too, just like personally, was like making sure I was waking up at a decent hour, you know, not sleeping in until noon you know, waking up at, you know, 7.30, 8 a.m., you know, even if I was waking up earlier during my branch, but making sure that, like, the time wasn't, like, completely off, you know, getting a good workout in, taking care of myself, you know, um, you know, just really, really making it a semester of me, you know, and uh, that's kind of what I'm about this semester, too, is, you know, the fall's really fun, you know, there's football games, there's parties, there's everything, but, like, the spring is like where I'm my best self, you know? And so you gotta, you gotta really hone in and, you know, not just worry about your branch, but take care of yourself, take care of, you know, your body. And if you, if your mind and your body and, you know, you're getting a good workout in and you're eating the right foods, it's going to be really awesome this summer because you're just going to feel like a million bucks. So I think that's important too. Solid. I agree. Joseph, what about you? You know, for me, um, it's really three, it was really two or three things. Um, number one is your mentality, you know, is something that you guys need to get in the habit right now. Um, one thing that all you can do is something called visualization. You know, I mean, every night before I went to bed, I, and you don't have to do it every night, but before I go to sleep, I just envision what my office would look like. I would envision, you know, what's my team going to look like? What are they wearing? You know, how many people do I have in my first team meeting? How many people do I have, you know, at, you know, my team night out, how many people do I have set for training? Um, and I would visualize great things happening. And I'd also, this is a little advanced, but I would also visualize bad things happening. Now that's not to say that you want to think negative at all, but I would envision, Hey, how would I react if, you know, come summertime, my, you know, roof leaks in the middle of training, how am I going to handle that? Am I going to freak out or am I going to be a duck on water? And I would visualize things like that happening. You know, and over the summer, bam, what do you know? My roof started leaking in the middle of my receptionist. I had seven receptionists and it just started leaking. And, and, and I walked in and they were freaking out. I was like, oh, cool. No big deal. And they were like astonished at how I didn't care. I was like, cool, let's get back to calls. No worries. You know, and it's because I had prepared for that mentally, you know. Um, but again, I want to stress with that. Don't think about negative situations. Just think about how you would handle tough adversity. Um, you know. I'm going to jump um, in here really quickly, Joseph. So what you just described is called stoicism, and it's an incredibly valuable act to perform when you're preparing for something. And there's a difference between thinking about the negatives and freaking yourself out about the negatives, and then thinking about the negatives and thinking about how you're going to overcome them and overcome it versus just like Joseph said. So I think what you just said there is absolute gold. You know not like visualize the positives, visualize your office, visualize your team, visualize the sales coming in, the people coming in, the PRs coming in, visualize all of that. But also think about, okay, so what if something goes wrong? How am I going to handle that? And kind of mentally create a game plan for yourself so that when it does happen, you don't run around like a chicken with your head cut off for the first 10 hours wondering what the heck you do. You already have a plan created. So I think that's brilliant. I yeah, have good. something to add on off of that too. Sure. That like, obviously like that is super important like for yourself and like I think that's awesome I do the same thing I visualize all the time but also don't feel like you're alone like don't feel like you have to handle those issues along like call your dm like I called my dm 15 times a day for the first three like I'm not kidding I was so annoying and then finally she's like Nicole I have my own office and I was like okay <laughs> so like just make sure like you realize too that like you're not alone in this process like reach out to someone and say hey like how would you handle this or how would you handle that um because it's super you know not that way you're not freaking out you're kind of like oh like what would they do kind of thing so make sure you don't feel alone in the process and that you know, you feel you have that person you can reach out to, you have that little circle. Like I always like stick to the thing like, oh, like always have someone in front of you, always have someone behind you and always have someone that's with you. So, you know, that's something I would call someone about and just be like, hey, like how would I handle the floor or the roof or whatever, so. Yeah, and I think one of the, the cool things you just mentioned is exactly what the Branch Impact Group is all about. You know, beyond just providing you guys with content and providing you with training, when the summer hits, this is also a place where you can come and you can ask questions or describe scenarios or get advice and find people who might be going through the same thing and 
figuring out a plan together as to how you're going to advance that next level. Or you can find someone who's doing something extremely well and start to ask them, what are they doing and how are they achieving those results? So, you know, absolutely use your DM. They're there to help you out, but don't shy away from using the branch impact group to get advice and tips and things like that, because that is really what it was ultimately designed for. So thanks, Nikki. That was awesome. The last thing I'll say about habit is just make sure that, it, you know, you work out, you know, um, you don't have to be a big workout junkie. But one thing that I set in place before I went out of the summer is I made sure that I went to the gym three to four times a week. It was just a minimum because during the summer, it was really, it was tough for me to get in the gym sometimes, but I already had the habit in place, you know, wake up, you know, however early I need to 6am, 5am. So I can get to the gym, get a hard workout in. And I would make sure that that was in place before I went out for the summer, as well as my eating habits, making sure I was eating enough protein, enough carbs, all that stuff, my macros, so that I could, again, be the best version of myself for the summer. So do that now. Don't wait until the week before you go out to start putting those habits in place. Absolutely, and that's a really important topic too. One that we will talk a little bit more about in a, in a separate video, but guys, it's amazing the difference that you feel mentally, physically, energetically when you're eating the proper kinds of foods. Um, I remember my first branch summer, I gained like 25 pounds because I was going to Dunkin' Donuts every single day and getting myself hash browns and um, like, I, Nikki, I can see your face right now. I just wasn't caring. I mean, there was a Burger King right on the corner and no wonder I felt completely drained and exhausted after every day. Second summer is a little bit different. You know, I had clementines in my office. I had um, walnuts and almonds in my office. I had plenty of water in my office. I was eating salads. I was doing things that were fueling my body so that I could keep on going and I could, you know, pull those long days when necessary. So that's a really important tip there too. Guys, anything else you wanted to add about, you know, creating habits right now? I would say just routine is anything. So like, you know, for like, if you, if your schedule, your school schedule, like make sure you're having a routine, make sure it's not a fire drill every time, you know, you're trying to get out the door, you're trying to, you know, do stuff like that because it'll, it'll, it'll happen over the summer too. So just make sure you're, you know, making time for yourself and yeah, for sure. All right. So next question. So let's talk about office searching and territory overviews. This is something that a lot of people are going through right now. I would say most of the branch managers on this call have received their territory and in their upcoming Leadership Academy on, I think it's February 17th, they're gonna be going over a little bit more about territory research, office search. Um, but I wanted to hear from you guys, what were some major tips that you have for the candidates as they begin office searching, doing some territory overview? I would reach out to the old manager and steal their office that's what i did and it just saved me a lot of headache i um you may not get lucky every time and they may not have the best office but you know in my opinion you don't need a fancy office you know you just you want it in a safe area don't get me wrong you don't want to be in the heart of the ghetto but you want to be in a low like like a place where you're not going to pay a lot of money because you don't need a fancy corporate office to run a successful branch uh, you, you see something that's kind of yeah. affordable for you. It's, in a, it's a very easy to find area. And I, my suggestion is just reach out to past managers. If they didn't have a territory there last year, maybe a few years before and reach out to them and get their insight on a good area to find or find a friend or whoever you need to. Yeah. Awesome. Anthony, Nikki. Go ahead. Anthony. Yeah. Um, I would say find someone who, who lives there or grew up there if you can. Um, you know, like for me, uh, my assistant manager lived there. I'd been there maybe twice in my life when I went to my branch territory. Um, so knowing, knowing him helped me pretty much figure out my schools, figure out what were popular areas in the town or, or the city, which is really helpful there. So find either another manager, another branch candidate, um, even if you have to go through Facebook. I know I was talking with Kuval, which I'm sure a lot of you guys know Kuval, um, but I know that he was telling me that he basically met someone through Facebook that, you know, he's kind of messaging with a little bit. And he ended up staying at that guy's house while he was office searching. Um, so really this meeting someone in the territory who really knows the territory, understands it is really helpful if you're not super familiar with it. Yeah, for sure. 
Nikki? Um, for me, so I actually let my DVM and DM all my territory, and that's just because, you know, I was six hours away at school, um, and my office ended up being 500 square feet, and it was still awesome, so I would just say, like, you know, if you find something, don't think it has to be a certain size, or it has to be this, or it has to be that, um, you know, make it work, and um, you can still have a very successful office, um, you know, even if it is small, um, but I think some of the measures I'm taking this summer are a little bit different. You know, um, you know, I do want a little bit more space. And so, you know, I was really lucky that I had one of my reps dads who was actually like, can we please get you out of the ghetto? Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I'm super blessed that, you know, he's kind of helping me out, but I'm still going to be reaching out to, you know, tons and tons of people. And, you know, I'll probably do that through social media as well. So I like what Anthony said there is just, you know, reaching out through social media and saying, Hey, like, you know, what's going on in this territory. I need help finding an office space because, you know, word of mouth is better than anything, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And guys, you heard it here first from three of the top branch managers in the entire nation from last summer. You don't need a fancy office. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was looking for my first branch office, I came from John Wasserman's pilot office in Pennsylvania and his office was really nice. And I had this idea in my mind of what I wanted my office to look like. And so I spent so much time looking for the perfect office. because That's what I thought I needed. I thought I needed my reps to have the exact same look and feel of the office as I did. But what I found was that that was not the case at all. And with text to schedule, what is most important is location. It is not the look of your office. If you're a good recruiter and you can put some nice pictures up on the wall, you're going to have a successful summer. It does not matter how fancy the office is or how big the office is. You just need a place to run interviews and to run pre and post screens. That's it. Okay. Now, something that I wanted to talk about really quickly, Anthony, Nikki, Joseph, do you have anything else to add about territory office searching? I mean, get out there early, you know, take some drives around. Um, you know, just if it's a far drive, then just get there for a weekend, even if you have to, so you can kind of have an idea of what's around there. That way you can narrow your search a lot faster. But just learn to understand your territory, get to know what it looks like, what it feels like, people around there, um, and just get out there as fast as you can. Like you talked about opening in May, it's, it's a big deal. You know, I didn't open till June. So really get out there as early as you can so that you can get your office space uh, fast. Yeah. Absolutely, and spring break is an awesome time to do that, guys. So what I want to do right now is I want to quickly share my screen with you all. Um, so for those of you who are on your cell phones, I recommend watching this recording later on. But I'm going to talk to you about a resource that I wish I had known about when I was a branch manager. And it's a resource that is going to be incredibly helpful for you, regardless of whether you're local to your office or you're five, six hours away to your office. But it's going to be something that's really helpful for you when you are opening up your office, but also when you're looking to sell personally and maybe you don't know that many people in your area. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with all of you. And let me just see here. Okay. So I think I can share this one here. Okay. So we're going to go to meetup.com. So I want everybody to write this down right now is meetup.com. This is an awesome resource to use to find different networking groups. So if you are going to your territory, let's say you're spending a week doing some office searching and you want some insider information about the territory, find yourself a meetup to go to and learn from other people who maybe are from that area, good places to hang out, good offices, good territories to look at. So I'm gonna do, some, do a couple examples here. So when you go to meetup.com, you can actually put in your territory. So Robert Alcantara's territory is Troy, Michigan. So let's go here. This is stupid. And people can mute their lines because I can hear someone talking. Um, so Troy, Michigan. Now, if you are looking to get to know people in your territory before you actually open up, you can actually find these networking events that you can go to once a week, every month, once every two weeks, whatever it might be, 
and you can start to meet other people in the area beyond Facebook. So if you look at the groups here, you can see that there's entrepreneurial lifestyle. So chances are you would go to this group and there would be a ton of entrepreneurs or people in sales. You're going to probably be the youngest person there, but you're going to have the opportunity to give your 30 second elevator pitch and it'll give you an, a place to one, practice your stump speech, but two, also make connections with older adults in the area who one, might have kids that would they'd want to have work for you because anyone who's entrepreneurial wants their kids to be entrepreneurial. It's just plain and simple. Or two, if they don't have kids, you can start to build a network of people who you can call on when it comes time for SC2. So this is just another resource for you to use to meet people in your territory and to spread the good word about Vector. So you have this in Troy, Michigan. Another just example would be Princeton, New Jersey. And you can find networking events. You can find, like, here's this one, for example, Simply Referrals Princeton Business Networking Group. So literally the purpose of this group is to pass referrals. That's incredibly useful for when you are running your office, okay? So that being said, meetup.com is uh, a really good resource for you you know, when you're doing oh, research, you're to. research, but when you're also, you know, getting out and opening up your office as well. So I'm going to stop sharing here. We're going to move on to the next question. So let's talk a little bit more about, um, so something that we, we, we mentioned when we were doing our overview was the Wall of Champions. So Joseph, can you touch on the Wall of Champions for me, what that really is? Yeah. <laughs> so I'll post a picture in the group for you guys to check out. But I didn't have a dual function office. So essentially what that means is that I couldn't run an interview and training at the same time. Um, didn't matter because I didn't have a staff all summer. I guess it was just me. So I had a wall of champions that was in my training room. And so my trainees and my interviewees could see it. So you can put it anywhere you want. And essentially what I did is I went to Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Um, I spent like two dollars three dollars on letters that I just read out wall of champions hung them on the wall and then i found all the top reps from my not top reps top managers from that area which was about was about an hour outside of my hometown so i used a lot of people from that area who sold cutco that i knew about and people from my hometown and around the division and what i did is i would print a picture out of them and i would put their school it was a really good picture like a good headshot um off facebook or wherever you want I would put their picture in the frame. There are five by seven frames. I would put their first and last name, their high school, and their college, if they were in college. Um, and what that does is that created a lot of credibility for myself um, being in that office. Like I, I never – now managers have different – you know, opinions about this. I never once really said, oh, that, you know, this is a brand new office. I never really said that. I just, you know, was – talking and i assumed that we had been there for a long time and what that did that created a lot of credibility people saw that oh other people work here um they other people are doing well here and everybody on that wall though they were over at least ten thousand dollars in sales most of those people were 30 40 50 but i promoted in my office hey you sell ten thousand dollars this summer you get to go on the wall of champions and that really fired people up who love recognition I'm like, yeah, you're a walking human trophy now um, once you hit Dirty 30. And I would have kids fight to get to Dirty 30 first because um, because once I shared that with my training class, my first one or two, they were all fighting to get on that wall of champions. Yeah. So you can make this game whatever you want. But. So something that's really valuable about that, guys, is when you are recruiting high-quality people, sometimes money isn't their main focus. And if you don't – stress other areas of vector, whether it be the wall of champions, the opportunity to run an office, the resume experience, and you just focus on the money, you know, you're going to have a kid walk in, make a thousand bucks, and that's more than he's ever made before, and he's going to walk out. And I know Joseph Gordon talked about that in his mindset training, um, but it's really important to have other things in your office to promote beyond just the income opportunity. And I think the wall of champions really fosters a great culture of competitiveness and your top tier kids, they're going to want their face on that wall. That's just the way they are. So I love that. Nikki, Anthony, anything else to add? 
Yeah, um, I'm actually in my DM's office, so kind of cool. I can show you some of the things that he does and that I kind of try to implement as much as possible. Um, yeah, that'd so be great. First off, can you see everything? Yes. All right, cool. So obviously trophies, if, you, you know, if you're winning trophies, make sure you have those in your office. Uh, but speaking on the kind of wall with pictures, uh, this is my DM Chris's 10K Wall of Fame. So this is every rep that he's trained that's hit $10,000. Um, and so we actually have two more we got to add up there right now because um, to, to this month, which is kind of cool. But basically, he promotes this through training, through interviews. Um, basically, every PC he has is this for 10K fast starters. Um, and so I like the idea of having it for anyone over the promotion of tower, over 10,000 in sales in general. But having it for the 10K fast start really pushed people. I know last summer for him, he had six 10K fast starters, a 20,000 fast starter as well. Um, the, the summer before that, he had five. And then just this month, he's had two. So I know this helps a lot with that for um, his office. And it's something that we took everyone who was from his district team as well. We took those same pictures and just basically said, from our district team, these are 10K fast start champions we've created um, through, you know, the training that we run, through the interviews, yada, 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 basically. Um, and then as well, a couple of things he does in here also are his uh, Siggy wall, his homey wall, and then his ulti wall. And so basically anytime cool. someone sells one, they just get to put their name up there. And, cool. you know, kind of the same idea with mindset um, and, you know, reaching to reps in different ways is – some reps would fight not for the income, you know, in Newport Beach, California, like, you know, we have like celebrities and athletes who live here. So a lot of our reps don't really need to make money. It's just kind of for experience or a summer job to hang out or something like that at this kind of drove them for other reasons to work hard, to get their recognition, to get their name up on things. And so I think those are really important And what you put on your walls is really what you're going to promote. So same kind of idea, just knowing, you know, what your territory is like, if it's a territory where money's going to be a really high achieving thing for your reps, then yeah, talk about, you know, this rep made this much, do the big check program. If your reps are a little bit more involved with you know, a little higher level, they don't need the money as much. What are you promoting as far as um, opportunities, as far as recognition, things like that? Yeah. Physical evidence in your office, guys, is everything. And you don't have to be the one who wins the trophies yourself your dm probably has plenty of trophies that they can give to you just to put in your office whether or not you've ever won a trophy yourself but having the wall of champions having a place where you write down people's top sales having a place where you recognize the the top achieving fast starters or even just you know having pictures of different events physical evidence is going to make your promotion that much easier and the best feeling in the world is when you have a rep with a lot of potential that comes up to you and asks you what that wall is about or what those pictures are about or how they get their name on that wall because instead of you having to kind of inspire them to want that they now come to you and say how do i get that so physical evidence is one of the biggest things and you can take the spring to start preparing by you know accumulating different pictures and finding out the different reps in your territory or just in your division you've had 10k fast starts and getting their pictures together and just Kind of gathering some of the the wall supplies that you're going to need to really make your office look like a high-powered office nikki do you have anything else to add on that note um for me i think my um two biggest things were i i made the checks um some of y'all probably seen those some of you probably haven't but um the checks um just like have the paycheck like of the person and you know presenting those at team meetings and then putting them on the wall was really cool um, so that's something that we could do during team meeting. And then, um, another big thing just was having a slideshow, um, while I was doing interviews, um, uh, you know, while they were waiting around, cause it was just me in my office, you know, no one else did interviews. So, um, you know, having a slideshow of the Rolexes of people getting inducted in the hall of fame of, um, you know, Mexico trips, the CSP crews, like even if you aren't in those pictures, it's okay. Um, so definitely, you know, going on CSP's, um, you know, Facebooks and 
just copy, save, copy, save, copy, save, you know, over and over again. And it doesn't have to, you don't have to stick it to your division. You know, I had people from the Arkansas division. I had people from the Alabama division. I had people from Nick Smith's division um, and the Lone Star division. I had people from Kathy Vasquez's division, you know, powerhouse divisions, um, you know, and just copy, save, copy, save. And I made this huge um, slideshow and then I would update it with uh, my people as the summer went on. And it was just super awesome. And, you know, people would be like, whoa, is that a Rolex? And I'd be like, yeah. They're like, what do I have to do to do that? And, you know, just having that conversation and getting them fired up, um, you know, was super, super awesome. Yeah, perfect. So, guys, we have one more question. I want to do it rapid fire. So keep your answers to a minimum, and then we can always continue the conversation in the Facebook page. But what are some important things to remember and to know as it pertains to business planning prep? Because that's something that all of these candidates are going to be doing over the next couple of months. So what would be your, like, your top two tips for making a stellar business plan? Know your numbers. Um, obviously, the biggest one there um, is obviously you want to know what your, what your end goal is, something you pick and determine. Uh, with your DM or DVM. So know your goal and then break it down as small as possible. Um, so same thing that I would do with a rep if I'm doing a PC for hitting, you know, 10,000, you break it down week by week, um, you know, demo by demo, call by call. If you have to do the same thing with your business plan, know your numbers for number of reps you need, uh, PPR you're going to want, how many demos it's going to take per week, what your push goal is for SC1, SC2, if you do a challenge week, um, just really knowing your numbers as specifically as possible, I would say. Perfect. That's awesome. For some reason, I hid myself. I don't know how to unhide myself, but Nikki, what about you? Um, I think, yeah, just realizing that recruiting is the answer. You know, that's one thing, you know, my kids were having really good results. And so I kind of, um, you know, I would just recruit their friends essentially at that point. And, you know, realizing that you can have like just having as many people as possible coming through the door, um, you know, it is a numbers game. So figuring out how many people you need to launch to have, you know, your summer is, is what um, is going to be most important. And, you know, I, like for me, it, I simplified it, you know, I'm blonde. So, um, you know, having stuff that just is simple makes sense for me, you know, having that conversation with your DM, like, okay, what is one thing I can focus on um, that I know that will get me to my results? So um, I think as far as the business plan, just, just staying focused and, you know, playing catch up. So like, if you didn't hit the number of recruits, you know, double it the next week, you know, just getting super fired up and excited about um, recruiting. Cool. So what about you? You know, for me, it'd be two things. Uh, number one is think big. I, yeah, I don't, don't let anybody, if you're a big thinker, like I am, don't let somebody diminish that. Uh, I told my, my manager that I wanted to do 500 grand and he kind of laughed at me. Now, I didn't do it, but why shouldn't that be a goal myself? You know, I wanted to put in all the effort I could to hit that. Um, you know, you shoot for, you know, shoot for the moon, land on the stars. This is kind of my mentality. I'm always thinking big. Uh, so in far of your business plan goes, you want to make sure you're being realistic. Like you're not going to go out and do $2 million in a summer, but have big goals for yourself, you know, and because you're going to put a lot more effort towards those. And you're going to bear a lot more results because of that. Um, and the second thing I would say is, you know, just piggybacking off of what Nikki and Anthony said, just really breaking down your numbers. Understand that PRs are everything. And that should be one of the main focuses that at, in your business plan. Hey, how many PRs am I going to launch this summer? Because that is where you'll get the majority of your business. I did $220,000. I did $175,000 in PR business. If it wasn't for PRs, I would have done 50K, you know, just to give you an idea. So that's the only two things I, I, would, I would say. Think big and focus on PRs. Yeah, thanks so much, Joseph. So guys, I don't know if you've seen it in the group, but I recently posted a, a video that Greg Cawthon, the DVM of the Northern New Jersey area uh, division, he did a whole talk about goal setting. So your must do, your should do, your could do goals. Guys, there's no reason why you can't shoot for a really big number that scares you. But just like Joseph said, you know, it's important to also be practical as well. So if you're confused about goal setting or you're wondering what kind of goals you should be setting for yourself, definitely go and check out Greg's video. It's on the YouTube channel, but you can also just search for it in the group and it'll come up. 
that being said, we're in a little bit over time. We've got about 11 minutes left for Q and A. So I'm gonna go ahead and unmute everybody. And then just like we've done in the past, please just jump in or if you're on your computer, you can write into the group chat and say you have a question, then we'll go from there. So I'm gonna unmute everybody and um, first person we hear talk, we'll give them the question. Everyone is unmuted. Anyone have a question? Or you can post it in the uh, group chat as well. Um, so I have a question. Okay. So I'm currently away at school and I'm not anywhere near the office that I'm going to be opening in. I'm in Baltimore right now and I wanted to know what's the best thing to do to continue to grow and prepare even though I can't physically be in an office like running interviews and doing PCs and stuff. You can drive an hour to my office in Fairfax. <laughs> um, I would say, you know, as far as growing and when you're not able to be in an office, I would try to get in an office, but if not, I would, I would watch Vector Connect videos and read books, you know, as far as uh, a few books that I would, or a few Vector Connect videos that I would recommend for a lot of you would be just three, you know, the three that I really dove into and really dissected would be Drew Frank's, and I'll post this in the group chat and in, in the group on Facebook, but it'd be Drew Frank, the one thing. That I watched that. I can't tell you how many times I watched that before I went out. How many times I would sleep. Go to, as I was sleeping, I would be playing that video. You know, I would also do Tina Feldstein, The Psychology of Recruiting. That's a fantastic video, super underrated. And a few other books and audios. There's, a, there's also an audio channel on Vector Connect. A lot of you may not know about that. Dive into those audios. A lot of them are pertaining to sales as far as like demos go. But a really good one that helped me with my why, and there's a video topic on that here in the next few weeks, is, would be Emmy Brown, The Habits of Top Performers. You know, I wanted to really dive into what the top people are doing. And a few other things you can do with, as far as books go that I would recommend it would be you know, How to Become CEO, Jeffrey Fox. I think that's a really good one for all of you to start. It's a really easy read. It's basically rules on how to be a CEO, how to carry yourself. It's a phenomenal book. You can get an Audible. You can buy it. I would also do anything Grant Cardone and Tony Robbins is good too. You know, there I, I read all those guys' books. I dive into their content. I'm not a big believer in diving into 50 million authors at the same time. I pick one, two, maybe three people, and I dive into everything they have to give me. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so Joseph will post those uh, recommendations in the group. Um, but there actually is a Baltimore office, so. You know, there is absolutely a Baltimore office. There's going to be an office near you. Just talk to your DM about connecting you with that person who runs the Baltimore office and make the effort to get in there, whether it's once a week or once a month, but just being able to make that connection with that DM and just get into a vector office. Um, like I said, whether it's once a week, once a month, really, really important. All right, next question. Any other questions? They're out there. All right, guys. So since we haven't had any questions, we're going to wrap up the call for right now. Um, okay. Um, so we are going to post this recording in the next 24 hours. If you have any other questions, Nikki, Joseph, and Anthony are part of the Branch Impact Group. Feel free to reach out to them directly or post a question in the group and they will answer it themselves. But I hope you guys gained all the value you possibly could from this call. Um, enjoy the next 80 days as you prepare for opening up your branch office and we will talk again on February 21st. Bye everyone.